CCL 650 presents your source for leading edge news and information on today's hottest products and services. This is Experts on Call. And good evening. My name is Tony Giovento. I'm the host of Key Pacific's Talk About Strata. Uh, we're getting ready for winter and the first fall storms are coming in and we're talking tonight to Dan Schmidt from Remdell Painting and Sean Lang from Interprovincial Roofing Consultants. Welcome, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having us. So uh, here we are. Harvest moon looks like a full moon. It looks like the first big storms are going to roll in on Friday and Saturday. What does fall and winter mean to your business? Well, I think the the weather shifts really means you got to slow down in your in your painting and and be much more cautious in what you do. Um, we we still do some painting in the clear season. That's we're hoping we'll get some some sunny days yet and some clear days. But uh, you need to be really cautious. Uh, cool cool weather typically and rainy weather means things don't dry out again. So wood that gets wet uh, and it might have dried in summer in a day or two now is going to take a week to dry at times. Um, and so um, we get the rain, and but we also get moisture around this time of year. Uh, this morning uh, was was uh, rainy, and then some humidity overnight uh, brings all that moisture that sits on surfaces like steel or or uh, wood fencing or that kind of thing. And so condensation. Yeah, y that condensation just makes everything soppy and wet, and it just doesn't dry out during the day typically. So it's pretty much a bad sign when all the spider webs and cobwebs have kind of like a dewy rain on them in the mm -hmm. morning. You, mm -hmm. you know it's not a great day to paint, probably. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> what about yeah. roofing, Sean? Oh, from a roofing standpoint, this is the time of year when you really want to start paying attention to your building's roof. Um, whether it's a work in progress or it's just a, a roof system that's been in place for a long time, uh, it's got to be prepared for the, the storms, as you say, that are coming. So you should really be having your roof inspected so that you know exactly what needs to be done or or you know if you don't need to do anything at least you know you're good for the winter uh, a lot of people don't realize their drains are plugged and they don't realize they're missing shingles they don't realize there's a lot of sealants that are failing and these are all things that are going to come and, and wake you up in the middle of the night if you don't pay attention to them now so uh, it's a great time to start thinking about that and actually acting on uh, doing some maintenance so we had a rain about 10 days ago in the Tri-Cities area where I live. Dan, you live there too. Mm -hmm. uh, we had 48 millimeters of rain in a, like a four-hour window. And even though all of the gutters and everything on our property were cleared, mm -hmm. uh, they still overflowed. Uh, so, you know, even at best case scenario, we get some of these intense storms that create yeah. some really adverse conditions. And um, uh, so so if you're looking at a schedule for re-roofing or, you know, you're dealing with uh, intermediate repairs, you know, I think people ask the question and we get the question quite often, can we re-roof a building in the rain? And obviously we have tarps, we have mm -hmm. the ability to do that. But how much more difficult is it when we're dealing with stormy weather? Oh, it's <coughs> tremendously more difficult. Um, it can still happen, and not during stormy weather and not during rain. Uh, we'll, we'll just make sure that that's clear. But what can happen is the roofing will st still progress over the course of the winter. And in some cases, uh, if the contract permits, they'll actually hoard a building. They'll actually cover it over with uh, poly wrap, and they can roof underneath that, depending on the, on the actual project under play. But usually what roofers will do is they'll dance between the raindrops, meaning that if they have a two-day window, they'll go and tear off a section and get it as watertight as they can, and they'll come back and do minor detailing on those iffy days. So the roofing contractors uh, in our uh, climate, in our lower mainland, are actually really good at that because they're used to it, and they have to keep working all year. They can't shut down. It's not, a, it's not that seasonal a job. Uh, but, you know, uh, from an owner's perspective, they want to start preparing and try and have the projects uh, happen spring, summer, and maybe fall. Um, if you can't and you've, you've neglected the roof or not paid attention until this point in time and you really do need to have the roof done, it can still be done. The risks are higher, obviously, because you're going to have a lot more water hitting the roof system when it's half done and there's tie-ins involved. Uh, but it can certainly still be done. So rain's not the only thing, of course, though, for us. There's the wind. <coughs> yeah. There's Wh wind, and yeah. in up higher elevations and in part of the regions of the province, when we get to Whistler, we get mm -hmm. out to the Fraser Valley, mm -hmm. we also deal with adverse winter conditions yep. as well. Yep. So snow, ice, all yep. of the things that are about to come upon us yep. in the next couple months are, are things that the strata corporations need to be preparing for. Yeah, and that goes uh, hand in hand with doing some preventative maintenance too because making sure that all your gutters are clear, that your your shingles and your eave protection are all in good good shape on, uh, on the eaves of the building if you have a sloped roof. 
will really come into play when you do have a high snow load and it's melting back into the roof system. Because what happens is that the snow builds up and it can build up around any vents or any pipes on the roof and it'll start to melt from those locations because they actually bring heat up from the inside of the building, allowing water to pool on the snowpack, which then if it was to rain heavily, right. which quite often it does right after a snow, that water will actually pool right around that roof pr penetration and run back into the building. So we get a lot of calls about, oh, my roof is leaking. Well, the, it's not really leaking. It's just the situation has permitted it to leak or t permitted this to happen. So when designing a roof system, we always try and take the, the precautions for that as best we can. But there are some instances where the environment actually just develops a situation where there's enough snow, there's enough rain that you can't get away from it. So what happens there is you should have roofers on call who are willing to come out and able to come out and safely go up on your roof system and clear away the snow around those, those issues that could be a problem. The key is safely, not a bunch of volunteers Absolutely. dragging themselves across the roof trying to solve the problem Absolutely. Themselves. There's tremendous hazards, particularly on a, a steep-pitched roof where you've got a lot of snow and ice. You shouldn't even be going on there. Right. So uh, it's a tough call. But if you have an emergency situation, you're going to have to send somebody up there, and they better be trained. Uh, good advice. Uh, so, Dan, prep of surfaces. That's that's often a, a big question that comes up where we're dealing with preparation of wood surfaces or concrete or stucco. Mm -hmm. um, wh what are the seasonal limitations around that? So we're dealing with moisture, we're dealing with temperature. That's another issue. Um, what are the kinds ty type of things that Stratus should be aware of when they're dealing, even if they're only dealing with their own little, you know, touch-ups on their own complex that they're managing themselves? Sure, and and it is the kind of season, as you were just hearing, or we're kind of all uh, dancing around raindrops is a great great term there. Uh, we, we still haven't figured out a way to paint in the rain, and so if it's raining, we just need to plain stop. But we do get um, uh, s some of the situations where it's cool but clear. And those are the kind of days that, that if you do have work that's still needing to get done, you can get that done. So a lot of preparation. If you're talking about uh, sanding wood or, or doing some minor caulking or repairs like that, that's certainly on a dry day is very, very suitable to be done. I, I kind of recommend if you've got an area that's unprotected, so if you've got some wood siding or something, that maybe you've replaced some areas or you've got some unprotected wood. Um, in particular, wood wants to be protected from the elements. Uh, if you can get it dry enough that you can put a coat of primer onto it and conceal it and protect it, then leave it over winter. And what, what that's going to allow it to do is to be protected from the elements primarily, and then in spring you can give it a nice clean and you can uh, touch up anything that might be missing and put those finished coats on. But at least it's it's been able to kind of overwinter, as it were. Are there better products for wood surfaces versus concrete surfaces versus stucco surfaces mm. that are more durable in the environment? Yeah, not not so much a difference in that situation. It, the, really, the difference in why I picked on wood is because the substrates are so uh, unique. Uh, wood porous. is really uh, very porous, exactly, yeah. and 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 soft in that sense, and it loves to absorb moisture, and so it it also heats up fairly quickly. So temperature isn't quite as big an issue with wood, whereas with concrete or, or, or stucco or that kind of surface, they seem to stay cold in the winter surfaces. If you put your hand on a, a metal or a concrete wall, you know that, that the cold stays in that. But they don't get it as wet as quickly. So, so you want to make sure the area is dry then you want to be able to put a product on it that's suitable. And, and some of the changes in the industry have allowed us to work into the cooler temperatures. We never used to be able to work into late October and into November. Uh, it used to be the magic number was 10 degrees Celsius. Right. If the surface <coughs> temperature, uh, the temperature you put your hand on of the wood or stucco, as well as the air temperature, maybe even overnight, was 10 degrees or more, go ahead and paint as long as it was dry. Uh, now that temperature has dropped down to about 2 degrees for most, most products. So a lot of the manufacturers come out with uh, sealants and caulking, as well as primers and finish coats that are able to be used down into those low temperatures. And in fact, as a professional, we have access to even some additional products that will even go below zero. Um, and um, some products can be used in extreme uh, humidity as well. They use humidity as a catalyst in order to cure. Uh, so there are uh, some unique products that, that we have access to that I wouldn't recommend for your typical homeowner or the strata person that's doing touch-ups on their own unit, or, but, but uh, certainly suitable for uh, a company. Uh, we'll get back to the 
kind of the sins of doing touch-ups on your own unit in a minute. So <laughs> that, that definitely has some pitfalls to it. Uh, but you mentioned sealants and caulking. Mm -hmm. um, one of the issues that we see with buildings, and um, the Homeowner Protection Office has a great little guide actually called sealants and caulking. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the issues we have, and I suspect this is probably the same for roofing as, as well as painting, and with um, exterior finishes on buildings is the compatibility of caulking. You mm -hmm. you know, sticking a, a, a bead of caulking over top of old caulking yeah. doesn't seal the surface, you doesn't do solve it. the problem, no, right? No, you can't do it. No, we always ask in our specifications that they completely remove any existing sealants right. when they're applying new stuff. And you see it all the time. We go up and inspect roofs all the time, and we find layer upon layer of goop on, on every wall or every penetration and they're doing nothing because they don't even clean off the algae right so they they put the sealant on and they kind of travel it on with their fingers and it, you know to the layman it looks oh well look at all that material on there yeah. but it's not doing anything right. so unless you've got a really good bond to the actual substrate that you're trying to seal to you're not accomplishing anything in fact you're making it harder to see if there's an issue so we see that sort of situation we now have to start poking and prodding on the edges of the sealant to see how much of it is actually bonded and if you don't have that bond, you don't have anything. It's just doing nothing. So for penetrations on a rooftop, like venting, drains, those yep. types of things where there are lots of sealants, yep. uh, that's going to be a real target area, I suspect, for the inspection process pre-winter each year. Absolutely. Yeah, we go up and we check all the sealants, all the flashings, and especially if you have a gum edge flashing, which holds, a, it's a pocket that actually right. holds a lot of sealant. Is that sealant dipped down so it's holding water? Is it actually properly uh, coved so that the water will flow off of it rather than being dipped down or concave? And if, if it's holding water, if the sealant will actually hold a small amount of water and it doesn't seem like a lot, but a couple millimeters of water in a heavy rain, that means it's constantly sitting there. If you don't have a bond, that's a drip going into your building or potentially defeating the roof system behind it. Right. So it's a primary, it's a, uh, the primary um, waterproofing medium on that flashing. And you'll have uh, storm collars on all your pipes. You'll have sealants on your flashings around doors, possibly windows as well. All these need to be checked. So, but it raises an interesting question because we frequently will have kind of interface between the finishing of the exterior of the materials, the paint products and sealants, mm -hmm. um, and at the same time we'll have roof, roofing systems integrate into each other. And, um, you know, for want of a better word, we see decks and balconies around the province that have vinyl membranes on them mm -hmm. uh, that are tied into the wall system. Uh, it, there are there are just numerous complications that arise if those areas are not maintained. Yeah, and a lot of it is uh, is bad design on the part of the actual component installations behind the sealant. So the sealant is not meant to be a primary. It shouldn't be the most relied upon part of the system. It's the last little I bit of icing on the cake. If you have a properly uh, uh, assembled s system where everything is designed in a watershedding way, you shouldn't be relying on that sealant. It's basically just an added bonus, right? So, but you still have to make sure it's in good shape right, all the time. Right, Oh, well, you know, it's interesting, all the emails and all the contacts that we get from Strata Corporation. So, uh, townhouses versus, you know, wood frame apartment buildings versus um, high rises versus industrial, commercial, you know, the component, the material, the mixture, everything is different in every building. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, would you guys um, uh, recommend, and I think both of you have done this in the past for us, um, uh, for consumers and for condo owners in the province, um, uh, like a fall winter checklist? Uh, it, something to, you know, who do we call, where do we get the information from, uh, you know, uh, what are the things we can be doing to look forward to, what are the things that we need to contract out to someone? Well, it, it, from my from my industry, um, you know, it, it basically having a roof consultant come out and look at your building is the best way to go. And of course, I'm selfishly going to say that. But uh, <laughs> you could have a roofer come out and do the same thing, although they're going to be looking at your building as a, a bit of a feeding ground to try and generate some work. Um, but we do offer a service where we'll, we'll come out at any time of the year and we'll review your roof system and put together a punch list of uh, issues that need to be corrected. Right. And Dan, your office does that as well. Yeah, we do on-site reviews, um, and, and this is often a good time to be thinking about two things. I mean, one, if it's really going to get rainy from a painting perspective, uh, we want to move indoors. And so there may be some interior projects that, uh, because uh, we're looking for, uh, the painting industry is looking for interior work to keep our employees busy, mm -hmm. um, there may be an opportunity for you to save some money by moving indoors. Uh, there may be a time to plan for that 
spring project and to price out and go through the budgeting process and and see what's really necessary to be done exterior and and the other thing we really overlap with the roofing uh, with with sealants and so a lot of that uh, those sealants are really the protectants for the uh, interface as you said Tony the the areas between the painted surfaces and the other surfaces the roof flashings and so on and we overlap in the sense that we do those repairs and those updates of those kind of things as well those can be critical over those uh, wintry months that that you get those monsoon rains or or just the, the leaks that you don't know where they come from if you've done some advanced looking that could really help you and if I could make a quick comment here how many times have you run into a situation where you've painted a building and then they get the roof done yeah very common very common yeah and what does that do to your paint job yeah quite often it interrupts it and it makes it some parts of it ugly sure so I, I would just like you know if, if people are considering that either one of these projects has to be undertaken at some point try and think about the proper phasing of those projects I mean I, we've had projects where they've done all the driveways leading up to the building with brand new asphalt and now the roofing trucks have to pull in with their heavy bins and heavy crane trucks and they're gonna sink in because it's fresh and brand new or they've just painted their fascia boards you know, and now we got to go and take off the gutters and take off the metal on the edges and redo the shingles and everything. And they get all scratched up and the painters come back in, right. which is great for you. You get paid twice. Yes. But really, people <laughs> should be thinking about this before they go and schedule their projects. Right, right. Um, we'll, we'll follow up on that, actually, on deck membranes and vinyl covers when we come back after this break. I'm Tony Giovanni, your host. This is Key Pacific's Talk About Strata. This is Experts on Call on CIL 650.